Hey folks, Joseph Savora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Panentin. It's a new live-action CGI animated film that's also a French and British comedy that's actually based on the popular children's book Paddington Bear by Michael Bond. It stars Hugh Bonneville, Sally Hawkins, Julie Walters, who's been best known for her role in the movie Buster with Phil Collins, and she's been in several films after that, including the Harry Potter movies. Jim Broadbent, who I remember him the most from the movie The Bowers from 1997. Yeah, he, he has been in a lot of films, even before and after. But Peter Capaldi, Nicole Kipman, with Madeline Harris, Samuel Jocelyn, Matt Lucas, Michael Gambon, and Ben Wishaw as the voice of Paddington Bear. It's co-written and directed by Paul Kane, along with uh, Hamish McCall. The movie begins when an explorer named McCubbly Clyde, who wants up in the deep jungles of Peru, located a family of semi-intelligent bears who can learn how to speak English and have a deep appetite for marmalade, which is an orange type of fruit that can make it into you know, jelly. He tells them that they're always welcome to go visit to London so that way they can hang out and, and be able to you know, stay so they'll be safe. But it's been a couple years since they tried to do that. And the bears themselves uh, are named Lucy and Bustuzo. So they wound up living in harmony with a young lad and their nephew, who actually once had a family, a mother and father. And he was soon to be named Paddington, which the Browns actually named them after the street name that's on the train station you know, later on. Anyway. Yeah, they want to basically, you know, living in harmony, you know, just making more marmalade so they'd be able to have them all in their home, you know, with their glass jars that they put in. Yeah, because they even had a, a machine so they can make all the marmalade that they could fill many glass jars all the way around. So that is until one day an earthquake actually struck their home, forcing them to seek shelter underground, which, sad to say, Pazuzo actually got killed during that uh, one particular um, disaster. Only left out his hat, which turned out to be the hat that uh, McCovey Clyde had gave him. And Lucy had encouraged her nephew to go to London while she moves to a retirement home for old bears so they'd be safe. So that way, you know, he can find his own journey to find another home, so that way they can take good care of him. So he winds up in London after taking a boat ride filled with uh, marmalade uh, glass jars that he ate. And of course, uh, his red hat, he actually hid in a marmalade sandwich underneath it, so he uses it for emergencies just in case he gets hungry. He winds up uh, at the train station where suddenly he's being um, brought in by the Browns family, you know, including Mary Brown, who's played by Sally Hawkins, and he actually introduced them to uh, her husband named Henry, who's played by Hugh Bonneville, along with her son and daughter, Jonathan and Judy, who are both played by Madeline Harris and Samuel Jocelyn. Of course, uh, Henry decided that Paddington, which you know, he didn't like him at first, but he decided that he'll probably stay for one night while trying to find a place for him to live permanently. So, of course, during that one particular night, yeah, which, of course, we even had uh, Mrs. Bird along, played by Julie Walters. Yeah, he causes many accidents that actually had followed, including the bathroom scene, which if you may have seen in the trailers. The scene where he actually took two toothbrushes 
and stick it into his ears and took out all that ear wax off Ugh. and licks one of them and and, <laughs> and suddenly he wants to you know taking some mouthwash and and then wants to in the toilet seat also he wrecked havoc with the entire bathroom by going straight to the toilet seat and then suddenly went straight down to the tub which all of a sudden <laughs> Uh, the water overflow the entire bathroom and <laughs> and once Mr. Brown had opened the door suddenly <laughs> the entire wave had splashed all the way through all the way downstairs while Paniton was on the tub actually riding on there all the way around <laughs> and led him right into the room <laughs> the living room Oh man, that, that had to be one of the most funniest scenes I've ever saw on film, if you think about it. <laughs> Paddington also believes that he can actually find a home by looking for the explorer who actually found them. Which, uh, apparently that's where the hat came from. Which was given to Pazuzu. Which, uh, that's when he was trying his search to actually look for the explorer so that way you know he'll be able to find you know what's going on once they, they took him to an antique store just to locate him but meanwhile a sadistic museum taxidermist named Melissen who's played by Nicole Kidman had once of capturing and stuff exotic animals to the National History Museum when she's becoming very aware of Paddington, so she wants to hunting him down. But with the help of Mr. Brown, Paddington located the archives just to reveal that it might match uh, McCovey Clyde. So they had to use a lot of phone books and, and all the others to, to track his address one by one. While Paddington remains home alone, which makes it even worse because with Mr. Brown's neighbor, Mr. Curry, that uh, came around just to sneak in and, and with the help of Melissant, try to capture Paddington, which leads to even more accidents that follows along the way. The Browns actually disbelieve his story that Melissant actually attempts to capture him, so they wouldn't believe him. So he wants up moving into the new home as soon as possible and ones up trying to locate him only to find out what happens next and that pretty much leads to, to the biggest story when when Melissa actually uh, kidnaps and captures him but it's up to the Browns themselves to save Paddington for Melissa to actually stuff Paddington from becoming one of these exotic animals that you see at the National History Museum before it's too late so that's what the film is about, and I had to say, I didn't expect much for it, I have to admit that, because I was surprised this movie had a lot of positive feedback that this film was going for. I didn't expect it because I had the feeling it was just going to be you know, negative and it was just not going to be as good as I expected it to be, because it is based on the book, by the way. And and sometimes, you know, movies like this, you know, they never transition very well. And they, even worse, it starts to become more of a, a, a comedy than anything else. But it didn't bother me much. I mean, I know they were going to probably throw in some, some bathroom humor and all this other stuff that they always love to do in children's movies. But you know what? It didn't matter. I, I really did enjoy the film. I, I think it's, you know, it's as good as it, it could actually be. Yeah, just, yeah, just for fun. You know, I, I really did think uh, Paddington was a very cute bear, as I remembered, because I did used to read the books uh, when I was a little kid. And I always did remember Paddington. So I, because I always remember he always loves uh, Mambalod. Because that was his favorite. So I knew the film was going to go to a different direction. And, and the fact that he found the Mr. Brown's family, you know, 
it was cool. Uh, I thought Sally Hawkins did a great job playing Mary, Mary Brown. I think she's definitely perfect for that role. And he wanted Bill, you know, at first, you know, he, he started to act like a jerk at this point because he agreed he didn't want to get involved in this because he knew that uh, <laughs> he was going to be a mess of trouble. And he did. But at, at the same time, you know, you know, he, he did like him. Because even the kids themselves did admit it that, you know, he thought uh, his father was very boring. And yeah. And I, I had to say I had to agree with him at first. Because he did start out, you know, very boring and, and a jerk. But then he got better later on, so I admit it. I actually like the funny scenes was when he was dressed up as a lady in order to find the archives to look for the explorer, McCubbly Kai. Yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of messed up too because, you know, the, uh, the guard was actually falling in love with him uh, already in disguise and, <laughs> and, and you yeah, know, being, being very suspicious and everything. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, there were there are plenty of funny scenes in this movie. Uh, I, I like the scene where you know Paddington was trying to uh, go after the pickpocket thief because he thought that he actually dropped his wallet, but he had to chase him all the way around, and already he was wearing the the police hat. <laughs> and suddenly, when when he finally captures uh, the pickpocket thief, suddenly all the wallets started to fall all the way around and. <laughs> And they were all relieved because they thought that, that Paddington actually uh, saved everyone's lives by capturing the thief. When in reality, he just wanted to give uh, back his wallet. So, I, I know, I, I thought that was clever and very funny. And there were several other scenes involving uh, Melissant you know, that Nicole Kidman has ever played. And hard to believe that Nicole Kidman did play a very good villain. Um, not something I expected from her since she's been several pictures where she often plays like different type of roles. I mean, I know she did play the villain once in the movie The Golden Compass, which, sad to say, I, I it wasn't really um, as good as as, um, as his reputation has gone. But I, I think, but in my opinion, I, I think it was okay. It just wasn't great. But it's enough for the film not to not to earn a sequel at all. But I did enjoy her performance in this one. I think this is definitely the, the kind of role I, I really expected from her. And the entire cast was really good too. It was nice to see Jim Broadbent uh, as Samuel Goober. So it was actually good to see him in, in the movie. Because I, I, I know he's been in several films. And he's always been this good in, in the movie uh, The Bowers when he played the fodder. Yeah, I always love him in that movie. Yeah, I know he was in that terrible movie, The Avengers. Yeah, not Marvel's The Avengers, though, because that's the one I love. No, The Avengers that was supposed to be based on the, the popular series from the UK wants up becoming an adaptation of that series that sadly turned out to be a disaster. But the movie also has some plenty good scenes there, especially the shot of the Dow House that they, that they actually show in the movie. With a lot of animated sequins, including the room that had the stair steps that filled with trees, a lot of uh, blooms and everything. Well, anyway, the that one shot that I really enjoyed was when they showed a close-up of the Dow House. Um, yeah, between every single room. Yeah, one they show about uh, Mrs. Brown's room, and then they showed uh, Mr. Brown's room as well. But the but the other rooms, of course, was when uh, they showed the son's room, which he actually can, uh, as he built a rocket ship, because he's, you know, he's always uh, fascinating of becoming an, an astronaut. Started uh, building his own train set and everything that, that goes around. Uh, while the daughter, you know, who's actually uh, very obsessed with uh, his boyfriend, wants up having a lot of pictures on her wall. You know, tons of pictures, and the fact that she's listening to music on her headphones and all that. 
so on and so forth. Yeah, because these are the quiet type. Yeah. <laughs> and and of course Mrs. Bird, you know, who's you know, who's played by Julie Walters, you know, she did a great job playing that role as the grandmother. And the fact that she's <laughs> She has her own room where she actually goes around cleaning up the entire place. Yeah, she, she's like the janitor when you think about it. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was cute. I, I love that scene. And, and I love all the narration that uh, Paddington has ever come up with when he when he's writing about, uh, about what he's doing over there um, so he can send the letter to you know, her aunt. So it's, it's cool. But anyway, I... But this was the film. I knew it was going to be as good as I imagined. I, I didn't expect much for it because of the ads that they went to it. But deep down of it, I had a good time. I, I think it's a great movie. Uh, I was surprised um, it actually did pretty well. And I was amazed that Critics actually enjoyed this movie. I, I didn't expect it much from them, but I didn't think it was going to be a higher rating of 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, that's what I discovered, but I had to say, <laughs> it, it was fun, in, in that sort of way. I mean, if you love the Paddington Bear books, and I'm, I'm pretty soon you'll enjoy this movie, I mean, no matter what, because I really did enjoy it you know, quite well. So, I definitely recommend it. So anyway, I give Paddington a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.